Cut that out, will you? You drive me crazy. You know, wait, not wonder you want somebody to see the light. Look, Joe, I'm going to get out of here. You're staying. Shut up and sit down. The way the boys get back with some clothes for us to wear. And we'll all land together. How far do you think you get that prison outfit? I don't want to get far. Yeah, I know, you didn't want to go in the first place. That was my idea. Don't forget a couple of the guards had a little hard luck when we were crashing out. If you take us back now, it means another ten years I didn't know our sentence. Maybe a murder rap before those fellows die. The ten years don't mean a thing to me, you're saving a flat forty. The ten years added on to that two months you had left would be kind of discouraging, don't you think? I had nothing to do with shooting those guards. Try and get the warden to believe that. We're all in this together. You're sticking. Look, I know you didn't want to make the plate. You just happened to fit in with my plans, that's all. Yeah. The way I happened to fit in the day you hired me to drive the car for you and your pal. Without telling me you were going to pull a stick up, huh? Yeah, that's right. Funny, is it, the way the jury wouldn't believe that story about your being a lily white guy out of a job who just happened to be hired for the day? The warden won't believe your story anymore than they did. You're in. You're just one of Joe Mellon's boys now. You trade bad work when you can get it. You're wrong, Joe. I'm not going to put in with you. Maybe you're right about them slapping another ten years on me, so I'm not going back. When we get out of here, I'm leaving. That's the boy. Let him in. Hello, boss. We're going to stop okay. Where is the nifty suit I picked out for you? I got some classy shoes, and socks, a nifty shirt, hat, everything in the world dressed man and wear. Yeah, well, it took you long enough. Well, we'd have been back soon. I had a hard time to get a suit my size. And the janitor didn't want any customers this late at night. We had to tie him up. That took time. This is for you, kid. Plain but neat. Yeah, here's the stuff that goes with it. Hope the colors are okay because I couldn't see in the dark. Okay, quit the blabbing now. Jump in those clothes and we'll get out of here. Yeah, only long enough to get out of town. And I'm saying goodbye. We'll talk about that later. Get dressed. You know why I went down there and get a green suit? I had to take the brown. Boy, did we have one like that guy? Oh, oh. Attention, car 72 and car 81. Calling car 72 and car 81. The description of these trespassers fits Joe Mallon and the five men who escaped from the state penitentiary today. He was caution. Mallon and his men are heavily armed. That is all. Gee, boss, that suit gives you a lot of class. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Hey, you look okay, Bill. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Give me, take a look at the roads for you. Hey, the cops! Hey, get out the back way. Come on.
guys trail like a bunch of cops, don't you? Wolf, you're a poach. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. Huh. French sort of chewed you up, didn't they? You just wait, I'll put you up, boy. How's that, huh? Like that? Okay. Go on back to your pals. Now listen, boy, you can't stay with me. I'm traveling alone. Too many people looking for me to have a dog tagging along. Now go on, get out of here. Be a good guy. Do this, fellow. You just can't stick around with me. Now go on. Beat it. Scram. Stubborn, aren't you? <laughs> All right. When you do that, I can't turn you down. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Take it easy, fellow. They're not going to hurt us. Nobody's going to hurt us. Not if we see them first. Uh. 
You know, I think you and I must be in the same boat. Somebody must have tossed you out, or you wouldn't have joined up with that bunch of wolves. And that goes for me, too. I'll bet you understand every word I'm saying. Well, if you do, I'm warning you. You're making a big mistake if you join up with me. If you want to go along, it's all right with me. <laughs> At least you'll be company. What do you say? Okay, we're buddies from now on. Say, if we're going to be traveling together, I guess I'll have to give you a name, huh? Let me see. Oh, I know. I'll call you Wolf. How do you like that? Oh, you like it, huh? Oh, so you want to go? All right, we're traveling. Nice little town, isn't it? And hey, what do you say, Wolf? Think we can take a chance? We've been staying clear of towns for a long time now. <laughs> okay. But first, I've got to get cleaned up and stitch this pack somewhere. <laughs> Are you barking at that little dog? Cut it out, you big beluga. Pick on somebody your size. Here, here. Don't be so ferocious. Come here. That's a mighty fierce dog you've got there. Good thing you picked him up. He might have torn my animal limb from limb. Might have been the other way around. Oh, Wolf's really very friendly. He'll be all right. You can put him down. I don't know. That dog's got a mighty lean and hungry look. Oh, no. He'd be perfectly safe. See? The pal. <laughs> hey, Wolf! <laughs> so that's what the rush was all about. I guess your dog told my dog he was hungry. Yeah. Hey, how about you? Are you hungry? Oh, don't bother. Come on, Wolf. Well, now, better. wait a minute. If my dog can be hospitable, I can be hospitable, too. I'll see what's in the ice box. Well, I could use a snack. that microscope as though you know how. Well, I've, I've always wanted to look through one of those things. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Sit down, your food's all ready. Thanks. Right. Coffee will be ready in a minute. <coughs> you know, this is the very first time that I ever fed a stranger. What's your name? Uh, Gray. Still Gray. Of course, you might have said white or green or brown, but if you like gray, that's good enough for me. The name's Bill Gray. All right, Bill Gray. My name's Linda Harkin. Have you been traveling long? Yes. Wolf and I have been on the road for five months. Well, are you just traveling, or are you looking for work? I guess I could use a job. What kind of work do you do? Almost anything I can get. Think there's a chance of me finding anything in this town? No. But my dad said the other day that he'd like to get someone to help him a little bit. He's a doctor. He might be able to use you. What would he want me to do? Oh, a little bit of everything. 
Gardening and taking care of the place and driving the car for him. Isn't much of a job, but I guess you could handle it. I'd like a job here. Well, he's out on a call right now, but when he comes back, we'll talk to him about it. Um, would you like to have your coffee now? Yes. <laughs> Come on, Wolf. Stop interrupting the conversation. You've had your dinner. Go on, pipe down. Mm, thanks. Would you believe that's the first meal I've had from a table in months? I take it you don't stay in any one place very long, then. No, I don't. Well, this job here would be a permanent one. That might interfere with your travel. I could go without travel for a while. Oh, there's my dad now. <coughs> Quiet, Wolf. It's all right. Hello, Dad. Oh, hello, Linda. And, uh, hey, Dad, uh, this is Bill Gray. This is my father, Dr. Hockness. How do you do, Mr. Gray? You have to know you, Doctor. That's Bill's dog, Wolf. Well, well, hello, Wolf. Hey, Dad, do you remember hmm? the other day you were saying that you'd like to find someone to help you out around here? Well, yes, I did say something about it. Well, here's the candidate for the job. He could take care of the house, and he knows gardening, and he's a marvelous driver. I think he's just the person you're looking for. Well, uh, I, I can't afford to pay much, but you'd have a home. How about my dog? Mm. <coughs> well, <laughs> Hercules says yes, and he's practically boss around here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> He'll start to work right away. Thanks a lot, Miss Harkness. The name's Linda, Bill. Come on, I'll show you your room. Aren't you the ambitious one, though? From the top of the morning to you. Aren't you fresh as a daisy? <laughs> now I know why they said go west, young man. It's a mighty pretty speech, mister. Say, can you take time off from your labors and have a little talk with me? Yes, so. Come over here, sir. Now, uh, this has to do with my social life. Are you interested or are you antisocial? I'm sorry, I'm a little slow on the uptake first thing in the morning. You keep on talking, I'll catch. No, seriously. There's going to be a dance in town tonight, and I was wondering if I'd ask you very sweetly if you'd take me. Well, well gee, Linda, I, I don't know what to say. I haven't danced in a long time. Well, that's all right. I'm no jitterbug. Well, what about clothes? Mm -hmm. I, I imagine they sort of dress up a bit. Oh, I took care of that, too. I sent your one and only suit to the cleaners yesterday. So you haven't got an excuse in the world. You may as well break down and say you'll take me. No, I'm a very stubborn woman. <laughs> and an irresistible one, too. Okay, it's a date. Oh, thanks, Bill. I'll see that you meet everybody in town. Oh, don't go to a lot of trouble. I don't think they'd be interested in meeting me. Did anybody ever tell you that you're a very modest male? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm worried, too. I don't want to meet a lot of people. Oh, good morning, Mr. Manning. Good morning, Mr. Grave. Have you been giving us some of your money? Oh, I was just making a deposit to Dr. Harkness' accounts. Well, great fellow, Doc Harkness. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if the doctor would be getting himself a son-in-law pretty quick now. Who's the lucky fellow? Oh, Mr. Gray, you're quite a joker. I guess pretty nearly everybody in Tempe knows you danced every dance with Linda last night, and, uh, that generally means something. Oh, oh, yeah, I... I understand what you mean. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, Wolf. We've got places to go. Morning, Mr. Grave. What can I do for you? Here's an order from Dr. Harkness. Fine. Have it ready for you in a minute. Seeing you at the dance last night with Linda, you two made a handsome couple on the floor together. The man marries Linda, he'll get a fine wife. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. You giving it any thought where you and Lynn are going to live? No, no, we haven't. 
I've got a couple of fine building lots up on Houston Street. You get around thinking about it, I'll send you one of them cheap. Thanks, I'll remember that. Say, put that on Dr. Harkness' bill, will you? Sure will. Well, Wolf, looks as though they've practically got me a married man. <laughs> That's the way I feel about it. Oh, Bill, wait a minute. Just the man I've been looking for. What do you want? I'm sorry, Bill, but I'll have to ask you to step over to my office. Okay. Sit down. How old is your dog? What was that? How old is your dog? Oh, I... I don't know. You see, he was fully grown when I got him about seven months ago. I've got to have his age before I can make out this license. You mean you're making out a dog license? Sure. I'm sorry, Gray, but you can't keep a dog in Tempe without a license. It costs you two dollars. Can't you make a guess at that animal's age? Well, let's settle for three years, huh? That's close enough. There you are, sign right there in the bottom line. Right. If you haven't got the two dollars with you, uh, you can give it to me some other time. Oh, I've got the two dollars, all right. Fine. One, two. Here's your receipt. There's your tag. Thanks. You know, there's an office down the hall that sells another kind of a license for two dollars. I'll bet you'll soon be getting one of those for Lindy, eh? <laughs> The only trouble with the marriage license is that it's only the beginning. The upkeep starts from then on. Yeah. Have you and Linda decided where you're going to live yet? Why, uh, no. No, we haven't. Well, when you get to looking around, I've got a couple of mighty fine lots up on Houston Street. I'll let you have one of them cheap. Well, I appreciate that. Well, I guess I better be going. Well, no hard feelings about the dog license. Oh, no. No, indeed. And when you do get that wedding license, remember I can hit you just as tight as any preacher. Thanks. I'll, I'll remember that. You know, I've got a feeling that I've met you somewhere before. I had that feeling last night at the dance, the first time I saw you. Did you ever live in Phoenix? No, no, this is my first visit here. I'm from up north. Well, I guess I must be mistaken. But your face looks mighty familiar. And I seldom forget a face. Hmm. Well, don't forget about that lot on Houston Street. Oh, I won't. Come on, Wolf. Very good fellow. You mind if I come in a minute? No, of course not. Sit down. Bill, what's troubling you? Troubling you? I couldn't help noticing that you were upset at dinner and later on in the kitchen. Is there something I can do to help you? Nobody can help me. Sometimes it helps just to tell somebody what's wrong. Don't you want to tell me? Was it something that happened today? Yes. What was it? Linda. I wonder if you realize that half the yokels in this jerk water town had me cozily married to you, living in a vine-covered cottage, paying installments, becoming a respected citizen. I don't understand what you mean. Well, I do. Last night, we go to a dance together. And what happens? This morning, the teller at the bank winks at me and tells me that your father is going to acquire a son-in-law. And when I ask him who it is, he gets kittenish and tells me this. I go to the drugstore and I get the same routine. Doc Marvin wants to sell me a lot so we can build our love nest. Even the chief of police tries to sell me some real estate. <laughs> you think that's funny? I think it's awfully funny. Well, I don't. I'm not the kind to settle down in a place like this. I have no intentions of getting married and becoming a 
leading citizen of Tempe, Arizona, or any other village. Small towns and the people in them get on my nerves. I'm sorry. That's, that's the way I feel about it. Is that all that's troubling you? Wasn't that enough? You have nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? Did you ever propose to me? No. Then what makes you think I'd marry you? get started, huh? No, I don't blame you. You practically told us to pack up and get out. Well, I don't know. It might not be smart to leave right now. You know, we've been pretty safe here. Yeah, we have. Now that we know how she feels about us, maybe we'd better stay. <laughs> I thought she was falling for me. Oh, so you're bored, huh? All right, let's unpack again. Oh, what? You know, Bill plays a pretty good game of ball. You ought to have a pull motor. There isn't time for that. She's breathing. Bill, why did you leave? Oh, I wanted to get out before somebody started yelling hero. Oh, but it was wonderful uh, the way you... Nothing. I've done it dozens of times. You have? Where? Forget it. Bill, are you a doctor? I said forget it. Why does everybody in this town ask me questions? Perhaps because they like you. Perhaps because they want to be your friends. I don't want any friends. Oh, yes, you do. Everybody wants friends. Everybody wants companionship. That's why you picked up Wolf somewhere in your travels, because you didn't want to be alone. Oh, Bill, why don't you tear down that wall you built up around yourself and let people in? Why won't you let me in? Why should I? Don't you know? Do you mean... Do I have to come right out and tell you I love you, stranger? Oh, no. I won't ask you any more questions. You just tell me whenever you're ready to, but, but whatever it is, it won't make any difference. I want you to know that. Thanks, darling. Maybe someday things will work out so that, so that I can tell you. And in the meantime, you'd better put on some dry clothes. Look at you. And look at you. Your shirt tail's hanging up. <laughs> Come on. Oh, good morning, Marshal Tate. Good morning, Bill. Come on into the office and sit a while. I was just reading about you in the paper. Thanks a lot, but I'm just on my way down the hall where they sell those other licenses. You mean to say you're going to buy a wedding license for you and Linda? That's right. Maybe in a little while I'll talk to you about that lot on Houston Street. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that, son. Even if you don't buy the lot, Linda's a mighty fine girl. You're an all right fellow yourself. I mean, I wish I could get rid of the feeling that we've met somewhere before. 
I was just looking at your picture in the paper here, and I said to myself, Dan Tate, you know Bill Gray from somewhere. Mind if I look at the paper? Help yourself. Mighty good picture of you, Bill. Not bad. Well, I'll be on my way. Go ahead. Man never ought to stop when he's on his way to get a wedding license. He might start thinking and change his mind. Uh, get not me. Go on, Marco. Go on, Bill. Don't tell me you're going to give me some advice every man should know before he gets married. Well, not exactly. Come on in. I want to talk to you. Sit down. Don't tell me that Wolf's license has run out again. Well, hardly. Bill, I just stumbled across the reason I had a feeling that I'd met you before. You, isn't it, Bill? Yeah, that's me. I certainly didn't figure you for a fellow who would shoot a man. But I didn't do any shooting. Joe Mallon told the warden you did. In the police circulars, you shot two guards, making a break with it. But Joe Mallon lied to save his own skin. Well, I didn't even have a gun. Mallon shot both of those guards himself. Maybe so, but that doesn't alter the fact that you're wanted. I hate to do this, Bill, but I'll have to lock you up. Look, Marshal. I know you have no choice in the matter, and I'm not fool enough to give you an argument. But there is one favor I'd like to ask you. I'd like to tell Linda about this first, because I don't want her to hear it secondhand. I saw that circular the first time I came into this room, but I didn't run away. I could have, but I didn't, because of Linda. And I won't run away now. Let me tell her first. I'm going to trust you, Bill. Any man who did what you did yesterday deserves a break. So consider yourself free until 10 o'clock in the morning. I'll expect you then. Shake on it. Thanks, Marshal. I'll be here then. You can depend on that. I believe you. Besides, you wouldn't have a chance in this desert country if you did decide to make a run for it. I'll expect you in the morning at 10. Right. Sent up for two years. You were in prison? Yes. I didn't mind it too much, Linda, because I was assigned to the prison hospital. I learned more things there than I could have learned in any other hospital. I understand. Then, when I had only two months left to serve, Mallon and his gang staged a break through the prison hospital. They forced me to go with them. I didn't want to go. In just two months, I would have been free. Some guards were shot during the break. That would have meant more years in prison if I was caught. Mallon and the others were caught. I got away. I couldn't go back, face another prison term. You understand how I felt? Now you've got to face it, Bill. I'm not so sure of that. What about your promise to Dan Tate? Is a promise worth another prison term? You've got to face it, Bill, don't you see him? Dad will help you when he hears your story. We'll get a lawyer. Other people in Tempe will help you, too. They like you in this town. And then when you're free... You what if I don't go free? Always. Hello, kid. Hello, Marty. What are you doing here? 
That Joe Mallon and the boys are in there doing a little banking business. Listen, you... Wait a minute, fellas, listen, you're a bunch of fat. know them? Sure I do. How did you happen to know their names? Why, I... I killed Ed Manning. Yeah, and your friends killed him. What do you mean, friends? I heard you call him by name. I saw you talking to one of them. It ought to be pretty plain to you, Dan, that this man is one of that gang of murderers. Well, oh, you're crazy. I tell you, Dan, this man planned the whole stick-up. After all, he's only been in town six weeks. He came here in advance to size things up for his pals. Sounds reasonable to me. Will you tell him he's wrong? I'm not so sure they are wrong, Bill. I had an appointment to do at 10 o'clock. How do you happen to be here? Looks like a murder charge on top of all the other things they want you for. Come along. Okay. Stop, Bill! Get out of the road here! On the road again, see? Only this time we're in a tighter spot than ever. Every peace officer in Arizona will be on the lookout for this car. Well, let's get going. That's as far as we go now. You want to do me one more favor? See if you can find... I passed out on you. What you got here? Milk. Groceries. <laughs> you must have been shopping. Boy, can I use these things.
hunting for both of us now. We have one more trip to make. Here, take that to Linda. Go on, take it to Linda. Law enforcement officers late this afternoon maintained a grim vigil over a 40-mile section of desert near Tempe, Arizona, which is the hiding place of Joe Mallon, escaped convict and killer, and five members of a desperate mob. All avenues of escape are blocked and officers guarding the area have been instructed to shoot to kill. Oh, they'll shoot, Bill. Dan Tate promised me they wouldn't. It's out of Dan's hands now. What was that? I woke up and keep him with you. I'm going after Malin. It's the one way for me to prove that I'm okay. If I can make him talk, maybe things will work out all right for us. Bill. But, but he wouldn't stand a chance against Malin. He hasn't even got a gun. Maybe Bill will do it without a gun. There's nothing we can do to stop him. Well, there might be. Now, what are you up to? I'm going to have Wolf take this note to Bill. And I'm going to have him take me to Bill, too. But you can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. And I'll tell you what you can do to help. Get the two big canteens and fill them with water. And pack some food while I'm getting ready. And get me a leash for Wolf. Now, you listen to me, Linda. I won't have you going out on that desert all by yourself to look for anybody. Especially when you might come face to face with a murderer like Malin. If you insist on it, well, I'll go with you. Come on, Dad. You're through. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. This is about where they said he left the car. We can start from here. Come on, Wolf. Come on. Now, Wolf, listen. I'm going to give you a note. And then I'm going to put a leash on you. And you're to lead me to Bill, just as you would as if you were free. Do you understand? Now, this is... This is for Bill. Oh, Wolf. Wolf, come back here. I want to put a leash on you. Wolf! We'll have to try to follow him in the car. Well, you won't keep up with him once you get off the road. Well, we can try. What's the matter with the car? Well, we're fresh out of oil. You mean it won't go? Not without oil, it won't. The feed line is busted. That's fine. Having trouble, Joe? Don't shoot. Don't you recognize an old friend? What are you doing here? I had to make a getaway. Around here, the only place to hide is the desert. Well, go ahead and search me so I can put my hands down. Got a lame left shoulder here. I stopped a bullet when you guys were holding up the bank. The natives thought I was one of you fellas. See if he's got a gun. In fact, a thing. All right, you can drop him. Thanks. 
All right, now tell your story. How can you show up out here in Arizona all at once? Oh, I've been staying out in Tempe for some time, waiting for a chance to take that bank. You fellas have to beat me to it. You get all the dough. All I get is a slug from that Hick Marshall when you push me off the car. <laughs> get that, fellas? <laughs> The kid was going to pull a solo job on that bank, only we beat him to it. <laughs> Maybe I'm not too late for a share of that dough. What are you talking about? You're going to have some difficulty getting out of this country. You're boxed up in 40 square miles of desert with cops on all sides. I might know a way to dodge them. You mean you know a way out? Yeah. Well, the roads are all washed. We found that out. The way I'm talking about, you don't need roads. Look, it's 30 miles of tough going to the Mexican border. You want to hire a guide? What do you say, boys? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, let's get out of here, will you? Okay, it's a deal. How long will it take us? Two days, maybe three. Moving carefully. You got any water? Some. Get the canteens out of the car. Yeah, hurry up, hey, get, get the canteens. Come on, will you? Okay, lead the way. Only don't try anything out of line. Why should I? I want to get out of here as badly as you do. Come on. We stay here tonight. Wait a minute. Why don't we travel at night? I don't know my way in the dark. Tough enough in the daytime. You want to go on without me? All right, skip it. You guys rustle up some brush for a fire. Gee, it'd be swell. We had something to cook? Say, I'm going to lose my figure getting my only nourishment on water. Shut up and get that brush. Go on, all of you, beat it. How much did you get at the bank? What do you care? I'll take my sixth now. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Sure I do. But it's a long time since I've had any important money. I'd feel better if I had mine now. All right. The score was 12 grand. Here's your share. Thanks. What's that? Wolves. Wolves? Yes, they're thick in this country. W will they pick on a guy? Not unless they're sure a man can't defend himself. Uh, they sure give me the creeps. Look! There's millions of them. But I'll give them something to yowl about. What's the idea of doing that to Gimpy? I hate noisy guys. What's the matter with you guys? That bullseye I just scored is worth $400 a piece to us. We'll split Gimpy's two grand. Mike and Glenn, get rid of him. Let's get some sleep.
It's daylight. Let's get started before the sun gets too hot. Boy. I was having the swellest dream. I was in a Mexican gin mill, talking to the prettiest little senorita. <laughs> You've got a lot of traveling to do before your dreams come true. I'll get the other guys up. Come on, you fellas. Uh-oh. He's over going to be short of water. That's what happened. You were supposed to watch the water. I got a good mind to put a slug in it. Oh, well, wait, wait a minute, Joe. I swear that stop was in good tide last night. It couldn't have been. I would still be there. Well, well, we've still got the other canteen. About half full. Not much water for five men, but it'll have to do. Hey, give me that. Hey, wait a minute, Joe. Take it easy. The sun gets powerful hot around noon. Thanks for the tip. I'll hang out of this from now on. Yeah, I could use a drink right now. Yeah, so could I. Wait a minute, we gotta conserve. Didn't you hear the man say we'd be thirsty at noon? Come on, let's get out of here. Money. Two thousand dollars. What's that, a message? Yes, it's a message. It's Bill's way of telling me that he's found Mellon. It is all right. A marriage license. Look at him drink. He must have come a long way. Wait a minute, Phil. We've been traveling like this for four days. We should have reached the border by now. I can't help that. We've got to go a roundabout way if we want to duck the cops. Might take longer, but... Okay, okay, keep going. I'll take that canteen. Nothing doing. On your way. Come on, let's keep going. We don't move a step farther until I get a drink. Some of that. Go on. You spill the last canteen. You're going to die. Listen, Joe. That's the way I put out. That's the way all we've got to get. Listen, Joe. Please. Listen, Miller. I'm going to have a drink. Hey, you guys can have a drink. Only a sip. Just a sip, my son. Joe, give me Go a drink. Come on, David. Guys. Too much farther to the border. Tomorrow ought to get us where we're going. You mean we gotta go another day in the hot sun for packing the water? Yeah. But you've got some ideas about getting some. Maybe you'd like to start digging a well for some. There's water under the desert, plenty of it. Yeah? How far down? A thousand feet. Oh, uh, smart guy, huh? Will I get over the border and remember that crack? Sure you will. Over a nice, big, juicy steak and a cold bottle of champagne. Will you quit talking about stuff to eat and drink? <coughs> hey, those things come out every night, don't they? Yeah. They're very patient when they think they've got a fellow on the spot. Ain't got me on no spot. No, of course not. But tomorrow night, by this time, we'll be in the clear. 
I will have so much water we can bathe in it. Will you quit talking about water? What happened? We split that 12 grand two ways. Marty just finished the water. <coughs> What's the matter, Joe? Can't you take it? Kind of hard to breathe, huh? Yeah. That's the dust. It's near nose and throat. You kind of dizzy, too, don't you? Well, that's the sun. Bad combination of dust and the sun. The only thing that'll help it is water. Lots of good, cool, clean, clear, sparkling water. Shut up. Hey, how come you ain't suffering like I am? Maybe it's because I've had more water to drink since we started, and you have. You know, I... I drank most of that first canteen. One you thought Flint spilled. Another idea of mine was traveling in the daytime. So you get good and thirsty. You better sell your ribbon, me. Go ahead and shoot. You'll be left all alone on the desert, you and the wolves. But tonight, when you're all alone, the wolves will move in on you. They do that when a man's crazy with hunger and thirst. If you happen to live through the night and make the highway tomorrow, you'll be picked up for murder. What's your angle? You want something from me, don't you? Yes. I want the story of our acquaintance from the start. Signed by you. All right. Got something to write with? You bet I have. Hey. How much longer? A couple of hours. Car coming. A couple of people in there. We better duck. Wait a minute. We ain't hiding, smart guy. I got three slugs left in this gun. The first one's for you for trying to cross me. The other two for those yokels in that car. Then I'll go across the border alone and have a swell time with all the money. You should have known no one can outsmart Joe Mallon and get away with it. Being sad, hopefully, ain't gonna do you no good now. Get him off me! Get him off me! Get him! That's enough, Wolf. Leave him alone. Wolf! Wolf, that's enough. Cut it out. Bill? Is this Marlon Bill? Yeah. Take over, will you please? I'm... I'm all in. Oh, darling, let me help you. Come on, get on your feet, Marlon. You, Linda Harkness. Take William Carver to be your lawfully wedded husband. I do. You, William Carver, take Linda Harkness to be your lawfully wedded wife. I do. Put the ring on her finger. My authority vested in me by the state of Arizona, I pronounce you man and wife. Kiss me. 